Directed by Ahmed Kabir, Kerala Crime Files starring Aju Vargas and Lal in the lead roles is finally released on Disney Plus Hotstar. As the series is finally released, we thought this would be the perfect time to give you an overview, explain the ending and discuss some hidden details so that you can have the best viewing experience. A spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the series. So if you haven't been able to catch up with the series yet, maybe you should pause the video and get back to watching it. But if you are done watching it already, kindly follow us through this video. And yeah, while you are at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel, it helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on. The series starts with a sex worker Sapna whose body is discovered in one of Kochi's shady motels. Sub-Inspector Manoj and Circle Inspector Kurian quickly start their investigation. The authorities are perplexed when they cannot uncover anything to identify the person who could have committed the horrific act. They simply have a fictitious address, the name Shiju and a brief description provided by the motel manager Sharad. Sharad describes what the man did while he stay, but fears that the police will harm him if they don't have anything in particular to arrest the real culprit. Meanwhile, Manoj and his colleagues are frantically trying to uncover Shiju's real identity. Sharad informs him that the offender was cross-eyed, wearing a dhoti and a black shirt. Manoj can trace his steps back to where Shiju was with Swapna thanks to this original description before hitting yet another roadblock. When Shiju's description fails to produce any results, the police try to make a sketch with his description and dig into the victim's past. They speak with Swapna's roommate Latika in an effort to uncover some leads. By sheer luck, they discover that Latika's body likewise bears the signs of torture that were on Swapna's body. After asking her more questions, Manoj realizes that Shiju has also been engaging in perverted behavior with other sex workers and begins investigating the many hotels that don't require valid identification for the stay. They even arrest a man named Shiju but he does not have slant eyes. Instead, he has great political influence but he is a pervert nonetheless. They use Latika to put him behind bars but Swapna's murder leads nowhere as they don't have substantial evidence against this Shiju. They continue their search but the officers are having personal problems. Manoj is a newlywed who hasn't got enough time to spend with his wife and is yet to go on his honeymoon. On the other hand, Suni's wife is expecting so he goes everywhere with apprehensions lurking behind his mind. With an STD booth number, they backtrack the real culprit Shiju's whereabouts, Shiju's ambitions to get married, the fact that he was in love with someone older than him and the fact that he once worked at the Star Hotel were all discovered by the police after speaking with Shiju's co-workers. After searching through the abandoned items at Star Hotel, the police ultimately crack the case and learn Shiju's original address. In this sequence, we also get the idea that Shiju's first job was at the Star Hotel which was also likely the only location where he had not engaged in any unlawful activity that could be linked to him. As a result, it was the only location where he had chosen to provide his address. There was also little hope of finding him because the hotel had long since closed. However, the police locate Shiju's family members when they get to the address and they are all equally unhappy with him. Although the police don't find him there, they realize that Shiju has always been perverted and that this has caused their family a lot of trouble. Venu discovered earlier in the series that Shiju had arrived at the police station with a bus full of people who had seen a case of chain snatching and registered his name and address. However, after finding out about Shiju and Cecily's relationship, Manoj concluded that she must have been present that day at the police station with him. So he requests that Constable Sindhu email him Cecily's address. The crew discovers that it is Jacob's apartment when they arrive because he had called Shiju on the phone. Jacob, a marketeer, was viewed as a potential suspect. However, he was removed from the list since he was unable to recall whether Shiju had squinted eyes or not. However, the police returned to Jacob's house after learning this new information about Sicily, whom they discovered was Jacob's wife and was having an affair with Shiju. This information benefits them since they are able to eventually obtain Shiju's phone number from the elderly guy he had threatened to kill. After spending the majority of the show traveling in circles, Manoj learned from Shiju's brother that Shiju was in love with Sicily and that he wasn't frightened to run away with her. Shiju threatened to kill the man when he saw him and Sicily having a liaison in the kitchen but before leaving for town, he made a commitment to return for her, take her away from her spouse and then marry her after eloping. 
She reveals that Shiju made a commitment to take her away once he was given a permanent position at an Angamali cafeteria, but she can't remember which canteen he was referring to. The police search every canteen in the vicinity before coming across his hiding place where they learn that Shiju has been employed at the police cafeteria. They are astonished to discover him working in the canteen right in front of them when they get there. Six days after the incident was discovered, they are finally successful in apprehending Shiju and are awarded medals of honor for their duty. When he is questioned, he essentially admits to killing Swabna because she made a comparison between herself and Sicily. Shiju was intensely protective of Sicily, the only person he seemed to care about, despite being a pervert from an early age. Thus, he became enraged and killed Swabna when she began making fun of Sicily because he could not tolerate the insult in any way. This presented a wonderful chance to delve deeper into Shiju's mind, but the show refuses to go there. The other Shiju, a union worker who is innocent of the crime, is questioned for a longer period of time than the real culprit. And this makes zero sense. The makers were probably trying to imply that because murderers like Shiju are evil and should not be researched, there is no purpose in trying to comprehend his mindset. But it is not clear why did they spend so much time leading up to his face being revealed. Additionally, there is a considerable likelihood that the viewers will have a negative impression after it cuts away from the crime reconstruction sequence. At the conclusion of Kerala Crime Files, each officer receives a pat on the back and the show claims that this is what a police officer's life is. Like as Manoj was appointed on a different case exactly after the completion of the Swapna incident. Technically, Kerala Crime Files is extremely sound. The editing is really, really good with excellent cinematography used throughout the series. It's impressive how the camera moves and separates the characters within the frames. It has a carefully considered look that it maintains to all six of its episodes. The entire cast of the series gives excellent performances, but the storyline of the show and its propensity to highlight police work above its pertinent issue of sex workers, abuse and misogyny are what make this such a tiresome watch. So to describe it briefly, my experience of watching the show was a mixed bag. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching this video, do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching Killer Crime Files on Disney Plus Hotstar, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema and series. See you at the next one and for the time being we are signing off, Vida, I feel like life is set forever and I'll be back.